Hello. How's everybody doing? It's amazing. Just following up from Chris Lemma, it's impossible to do that. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to jump into talking about is it time to diversify from WordPress, right? We've got an amazing panel here. Uh, but just for some context for our uh, folks, how many developers are in the room? How many product people are still sticking around? And how many sort of agency owners are there? Okay. So we're going to start right to left with Chris. Chris, give yourself an introduction, who you are and what you do. Uh, I'm Chris, uh, Christoph. Uh, I work on Easy Digital Downloads and uh, WordPress Core. Uh, my name is Andrew Norcross. I run an agency in Tampa, Reactive Studios. We have a client side, client service side, and we do commercial products as well. And I work on core and write code when I'm taking a break from writing code. Uh, my name is Corey Maruki, and uh, I run Crowd Favorite, and I'm celebrating my 21st year running uh, web agencies. Nice. So I'm going to throw the softball question out. Is it time to diversify, yes or no? That's all you get, yes or no? Can I use maybe? Mm, when I said yes or no, it was yes or no. You can uh, say maybe. OK, I'll go with maybe. All right, maybe. Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. Now, for, that was the easy part. What's your definition of diversifying? When you hear that, what does it mean to you, so, either as a developer or business So owner? diversifying like outside of WordPress, so like to other platforms then, I guess would be? I'm looking for your definition, sir. So if you say to me, like, diversify beyond WordPress, to me it would mean outside uh, to other platforms, so uh, to maybe like a Drupal or some other web, web uh, platform. Awesome. Uh, for me, it'd be more of a language framework thing. Like, I'm not going to jump to Drupal development for what we do, but we've had instances where we'll, like, build a Laravel app to go, go with a client project, and sometimes it interacts with WordPress, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, with all the all the new JavaScript frameworks, I mean, I think they just made one, another one uh, during Chris's talk. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> some of those things are, you know, are better tools for for what a client needs. I mean, obviously, there, everyone over there is learning deeply about JavaScript right now. So uh, you know, it, it, to stay solely like dead focused on WordPress, I think can be narrowing and can be limiting at times because you know, as your clients get bigger and their needs get wider they're going to need more than just what WordPress can do. But they still, if the fact that you already have that relationship, they're going to go to you first, and they're going to want to pay you money before they go pay somebody else money to do it. And if you're like, oh, no, this is the only thing that we do, eventually you're just not going to do anything for them anymore. Sure. Yeah. So for the business case use, um, we find that most enterprise clients absolutely love the WP Admin interface with all the talk about the customize and everything else. The reason why in the last three, four years it's really penetrated the enterprise is the ease of use and the ease of adapting it for the rank and file employees. So that's a strong case. The weakest case for using WordPress with our enterprise clients would be probably the, uh, the WP um, post meta table. And we're finding more and more clients are asking us to literally go around that and use different database solutions in design. It's amazing. Um, what about other platforms? So let's, let's talk business opportunity. So what either other platforms do you f most likely integrate with or connect WordPress to? Is it a lot of social, a lot of sort of email connection or marketing stuff? What's the opportunity to look outside of WordPress for the business? Right? Like Andrew, you mentioned people are going to look at you to, to offer a little bit more, like maybe Salesforce integration or MailChimp or something like that. What have you seen? as a business opportunity? What we found a lot of times is we've made the WordPress kind of become the hub of what they're doing. Uh, I'll use Nextrat for an example, which while not an enterprise, it's, it's one guy and that's his thing. Um, the, the WordPress site is where the, you know, he takes his content in a particular fashion that we built and that not only feeds the actual website, but that feeds out to the iOS app, it feeds out to his MailChimp newsletter, it's almost done feeding to Apple News. Whenever Facebook does their thing, it'll go there. Um, we have it built in such a way that the content can be syndicated in places like Forbes or Time or, or other, you know, if he has any sort of relationship with any, any other publishers. And, you know, making the data available 
you know, as soon as you get it in something like JSON or some, some very just basic bare bones method, then it doesn't matter what you're integrating with. Um, you know, WordPress has a lot of a lot of pretty clean ways of pulling in data, and we're getting a lot better at pushing out data programmatically, like not just like in a template file, but you know, making that stuff available. And because you know, especially with enterprise clients, they're going to have internal systems that they've used for 20 years, and they're not going to get rid of them. They don't care that they suck; they're not going to get rid of them. Um, you know, especially if there's certain regulatory or compliance issues if you're dealing with financial, you know, financial clients or government clients. Uh, all that stuff has to be tracked and, and made record of, and there needs to be people that don't do anything other than look at other people working. And usually there are very, very distinct systems already in place wherever they are to do that. And, you know, that's where I think where a lot of the, you know, the idea of diversification comes in. I mean, like, if I were to switch to building Drupal, I'm not changing anything about my business. I'm, I'm using a different sized hammer at that point. Um, but when I'm getting into like some of the API stuff, getting into like some of these front-end frameworks, you know, then I'm actually diversifying my tool set. I'm getting other things that go along with it. Chris, from the developer side, anything? Uh, what do you mean, like specifically? Like from in your context, like what, what are you seeing? Anything else that you want to add on to maybe what Andrew said? Uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of the interesting stuff now is with scaling WordPress. So like using things like Laravel or other frameworks as kind of like an accessory add-on. Uh, so if you're building like a SaaS, uh, you might use something like Laravel to work with the traffic and routing. Uh, so I mean, that's pretty popular. But yeah. Laravel and traffic and routing. Raise your hands if you understand that. Just want to get a feel. Okay. <laughs> Just want to get a feel. Um, from the enterprise side, this is sort of an inverse look, right? Some clients, we don't have a lot of enterprise clients, but some are diversifying and going to WordPress and using it. Right now, we've done some solutions as middleware, right? Just using WordPress as the publishing platform to, you know, their native app that's, you know, pulling data from AWS or something like that. And what are your thoughts on enterprise maybe using? Now, they, they are looking to sort of diverse their own solutions and adopt WordPress. Uh, kept as simple as possible for the non-developers, what ends up happening is WordPress is being used as part of a larger solution. So data is coming out of legacy systems, out of CRM systems, out of systems that are closed sourced or open sourced, and the WordPress part of the site is just one aspect of it. And sometimes we're actually using the back end of WordPress to manipulate data outside of WordPress. So they're, they're, they're really starting to blur the lines on what the requests are business-wise on how to do that. Um, and I think it's healthy yeah. because one of the weaknesses of the Drupal, uh, the old Drupal uh, installs before the latest ins version was the fact that it was hard to train people. So people came over to WordPress, but then they found the limitations, as I was saying earlier, with the database structure. Now they're just saying, okay, we don't have to have it completely one way or the other. Let's look at integrating this and, and just seeing what we can mix together. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be so much easier if there was like a REST API baked yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Too soon to make that joke? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, <laughs> well, I want to I want to have uh, audience members ask any questions uh, to our panel, if there are any. Quickly, maybe? Nobody. Anybody? All right. So we'll continue on the conversation with diversifying. How do you guys sort of... Oh. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. For those of us who are old enough to remember Dynamo ATG in the late 90s and early 2000s, that's exactly what it did, was it was more of a framework and less of a completely customized solution all the way in. All the way in. And clients are asking for that because they want that standardized, from business case say, sense, they want the standardized feel of the WordPress backend for their rank and file employees to be able to edit information. But not all, all that information might be contained in WordPress. Uh, 
Depend depends on the client. Yeah, I'm not the right person to ask how we do that. <laughs> but yes, we do, do. We do use other other databases as well, depending on the scenario and the client. Yes. I mean, in, it's a great idea. I mean, I'd love to see it, obviously. Um, I mean, I don't have the Drupal logo tattooed in my arm. But <laughs> the, you know, at the end of the day, you know, if WordPress isn't the right tool, I'm not going to use it. Uh, if, if it's not the right tool because of the use case, then I'm going to find a different tool. If it's not the right tool because it's not the right client, that's, a whole, that's probably a whole different panel. Um, but, you know, for me, it, it, a lot of it comes down to, like, WordPress is how I learned development. You know, that's initially what I got into when I left finance. And, you know, talking about old systems, and, like, I, I was writing COBOL before I did this. And, you know, so, like, there's use cases for, for a lot of different things. And a lot of times the clients don't really know what they want. They just know, here's what I need to have happen. And that's why we're the ones being paid to do it is – Allegedly, we have the expertise to answer that question. Um, you can throw WordPress at a lot of problems, and it can solve it to a point. Um, really, you know, some of the stuff that you know Chris alluded to is really when it gets to scaling issues, and when it gets to, you know, because like for example, like the user role setup. Like, well, we'll kind of complain about it, like as nerds, like, oh, I wish I could map this to that, and you know, it's still light years ahead of a lot of other systems in terms of user role management and, and login security and, and that sort of stuff. So a lot of times you can set up something very quickly, relatively easily, and just map it out kind of behind the scenes so that, you know, again, the rank and file, they just go to one screen, they log in, they see their things. Because the last thing that, you know, because like, you know, thinking about why we don't like documentation. Like imagine making documentation for people who don't write any code, will never write any code, um, and you have 8,000 employees spread over three countries, and now the you know, some system behind the scenes has changed, now all your documentation is wrong and invalid. So being able to use WordPress in the right place and remove it when it's not allows a lot of companies, you know, from business case to keep that continuity that everyone just keeps knowing what they're doing and they just, they're comfortable doing their job. And to the question about 25 versus 50 or beyond, um, as the guy who works on large-scale projects and clients, I'll say Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, those are becoming more popular for the easy sites. We don't know where WordPress is going as a project. It's all up to us, everybody in this room and everybody in the community. But at the same time, there's different options out there, and we need to decide whether this is going to be a tool that is made for developers to customize for clients who want something customized as a framework, or do we want it to be the easiest, simplest thing, period, for tiny, small marketing websites? And that's up to us to decide as a community, because I don't think most of the people in this room are necessary to create a Squarespace site. Back to you. We can learn a lot from what's going on in that space. In my mind, you have to, I'm, I'm not using coding language, but you have to make some things hard edits to make it as easy as possible that give you a dead end for customization. And that's, that's just a business purpose. That has nothing to do with technology. So the more you do that, the more you're making yourself sort of dead end for being able to be open. It's a difference between a finished product and a framework. My opinion. Yeah, and I, and I think with the you know with you know when the when the REST API is there and, and fleshed out and being used, you're going to be able to cover a lot of those use cases that right now it's too 
like WordPress becomes too much of a finished product to do what you want, but it's not enough of a framework to build on top of where it's a project just doesn't really fit. Um, you know, when the API does become available, you're going to be able to cover a lot more use cases. I think I don't think we'll ever hit 50 without the API. I don't even think we'll get close. Um, and then once we do, then it's like, well, is that really the 50? Because it's one part of a whole. Like, I mean, I think at that point, it's just more branding and, and bragging than anything else. Um, but I do feel that, you know, as a both as a developer and you know, from product, you know, running product and, and agency, it's. I don't think it's going anywhere. And you know, the scale of client that we've worked with has gone up over the years. And the solution, you know, the complexity of what we've built has gone up over the years, along with what WordPress is capable of handling. So, you know, I feel I feel really good about being able to continue to do that stuff. Um, and whether it'll be an official fifty percent, like sure, I don't know. I mean, it, it sounds nice, but most people I mean there's a there's a good percentage of people that think Facebook is the internet. <laughs> it's true. They don't know the difference. And there's people that used to think AOL was the internet. So whether it's 25, 50, 80, it, it doesn't make a difference. I want to go to Steve. Go ahead. It's a great question. I mean, I've, for the ones that we deal with, it's probably a 50-50. There are some that come to us strictly because of WordPress, and they're familiar enough with it that they already know, you know, they, they know that it's easy to use, especially compared to some of the stuff they've been using in the past. Um, there, we've dealt with a lot of clients that are getting really tired of paying high licensing fees for, for bad CMSs, and they're like, this is free, and and that immediately is, is what sold them. So they're like, can this do? You know, they're willing to like lower their scope because of how much they want to get rid of this old software that they have. And there are other ones that come and say, this is what I want to accomplish. And you know, when they do that, usually WordPress is what we use. But yeah, they don't care. So completely true story. Uh, one of the top ten banks in the world uses Sitecore around the world for their marketing sites. Uh, about a year and a half ago, they had a board meeting where one of the board members who had a lot of political sway actually said, uh, I have a niece who showed me this cool thing that she's using on the internet called WordPress. We should look into that. They started a $12 million investigation into seeing if they could replace Sitecore with WordPress. So that could, speaks directly to, you never know where the client education is going to come from. Yes and no. I mean, some of it is, you know, there you'll run into folks that they there's some job security questions on their end. They're like, well, if I don't have this system, I'm the one in charge of this system, I don't have a job anymore. Um, I remember when I used to work in finance, the, the company switched over their intranet system to this horrible Java-based just tire fire of a system. Um, it would go down every day at 4.30 on the dot every day. It would die for like 10 minutes. Basically, I mean, this thing was, ho I mean, this thing was horrible. It was, it was badly implemented. Uh, nobody liked using it. And it was just for the intranet. Um, nobody could find anything anymore. Like, it was really bad. And I remember the name of it. I was there during the implementation. I remember how much they paid for it. And it was a lot, um, like seven figures. And, and there was like a minimum five-year contract sort of thing on this system. And like six months later, I'm sitting in an airport. And I happen to be sitting there's two people next to me. And this one guy, you know, they're in suits. I mean, I, I, I'm not wearing a suit. And yeah, I know, shocking. If I wear a suit, I look like going to a court date. Um, so, you know, and, and then that name comes up. 
and like I had such a visceral reaction to the name of that CMS, like he noticed it. And he was like, Are, you know what that is? And he, I had my laptop up, so he figured, like, okay, he's probably not a criminal. And you know, I explained that, yeah, the, I used to work at this finance firm, we implemented it, it was really, really bad, and this is how much they laid out for it. And he was like, and he like, kind of like reeled back, because obviously it was a whole lot of money. And I was like, you know, Word, I'm like, what you're describing, WordPress does this. I just opened my laptop to a local instance that I was working on something unrelated, and I whipped up three of the things that he had talked about with the person sitting next to him. He's like, how much does that cost? I'm like, how much do I cost, or how much does this cost? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm, I told him, I'm like, that's the difference. I was like, for the amount of money that you'd be paying in licensing fees for this CMS that doesn't really work, you could have two people on staff that can handle every, every little whim that you want, and you don't have to hope that company will implement the thing that you want in the pipeline of what everybody else asks for. So, I mean, one of the big selling points that I've, I've been able to, to talk to clients about is that they can have in-house you know, resources if they want. They can build it to w the way they want and not be limited by the proprietary license that they're sitting on. Yes, ma'am, right here. Percentage of users from free to paid. And does that increase the, what was it? Over time, does it increase over time? Uh, so do you mean from like free, uh, they're using WordPress.org for free, building their site, and then they come and hire one of these folks? Or move to a paid platform? Anybody have any experience with that at all? I mean, like, we've not dealt with clients that are on .com, like running a free site on, and .com and want to run their own. Um, they were not the agencies they would work with. Um, usually those are like individuals kind of doing one, one their own thing. Uh, we've had plenty of clients that have like built, started building their own solution in-house. They went as far as they could. A lot of times, even software companies, like they'll have in-house developers, but they're not web developers because that's not what they do. Um, you know, they build a soft, you know, they build accounting software. So it's like they have brilliant developers on staff, but none of them know anything about the web because that's not what they do. It's hard to say because most of them don't publish that stuff. I mean, I would only know the clients that I've worked with, so that's for me 100%. Um, but I don't know, you know, them, there's obviously a lot of colleges, and, you know, they, some of them are really, you know, like Blackboard's a big one or Moodle, or, I mean, but like they're, a lot of them are running into issues with scaling and with, you know, their students are knowing more about the systems and the schools that are implementing it. And, you know, they're trying to figure out ways that, you know, things are just working. So, we, I mean, we've worked with a couple universities to build like small, almost like pilot programs to see if it works from like a classroom perspective and then they'll, you know, kind of try to scale it out from there. But I, I'm not sure there's really numbers per se because most of them just don't publish that stuff. Yeah, we do a lot, or my company does a lot with higher ed and while I don't, I don't have any numbers behind it, a lot of the folks are hiring us because, I mean, WordPress is just so much more agile for their uh, college sites to launch and the department sites to launch and then contribute and publish. So from my experience, it's obvious to us that everybody's moving to this um, because they're so much more nimble, right? They can just launch and, and collaborate so much uh, better. I have a question though about this. And we kind of talked about like sort of the branding problem with WordPress in, in a way. The Drupal community, there's no uh, major like plug-in business, like modules you don't see for 39 bucks or 50 bucks like we see in the WordPress space, right? To the, to the, the level that we see in WordPress space. I've been on phone calls with corporate cu customers before and they're using like $50 plugin solutions to run their $300,000 website, right? And there's this expectation that even with them, <laughs> that, that we can just plug in another $50 plugin and it's all set. Um, do you run into that? Like, do, is there a, an expectation that gets lowered uh, in terms of price and quality uh, at your level? At times, uh, what I've what we've run into a lot, you know, what I've explained because we do a lot of plugin work. I mean, we've I've had instances where they're running some of the free plugins that I've written, and I'll explain like, you know, I'll say them like, hey, I wrote that, <laughs> and you know, they're always like, okay, you know, they're like, well, can you, you know, do you have another one that does this? And I was like, 
I'm like, the difference is 30,000 people want to do what that one does. You want to do what this one does. Sure. And, you know, most of them have been doing this long enough now where they understand the idea of, you know, of custom and specialization. Like, the more specialized it's going to get, the more expensive it's going to get. Yeah. You know, I've not run into a client in probably two years, at least, if not more, that has no web presence, and this is their first web project. Sure. So most of them have dealt with developers before. They've dealt with agencies before. They've probably been burned by one before. <laughs> um, so the famous line, my developer bailed on me. So yeah. It's, it's, it always starts the email. Yeah, it's like, you know, first one bails, their fault. The eighth one bails, probably yours. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and those are, but that's, I mean, again, that's just client management. But, right. you know, the idea being that, yeah, some of them are like, well, just go buy a $50 plugin. I'm like, well, then go find which one it is. Sure. Yeah. I'm like, and I charge 300 an hour for the consultant to find it. Sure, yeah, yeah. The right Google search. <laughs> yes, sir, we have top. For, for a lot of the clients that I've had, we've always customized the admin to some degree. Whether, like, always the login page. Um, and then usually we'll, sh you know, we'll shift some stuff around on the side, get rid of things we're never going to use, um, try to remove certain, like, meta bar. It's just, like, little things that they're never going to touch. I just get rid of it so they never have to see it. Um, where the API is going to come into play a lot of times is when there's already something that they're using to do whatever it is, whatever the use case is. Like, they already have an admin that they've trained on and that they've documented and then they have their own internal videos and all that other stuff um, where they don't want another admin. And like that's where the ad, where the API is gonna come into play where like they don't, yeah, they don't have to have another admin. They can keep using the thing that they have. Yeah. So I, I think the REST API is, is kind of an interesting uh, idea. Uh, one of the earlier questions was about getting from 25 to 50%. Uh, and one of the key things that has to happen for that to occur is flexibility as a project, right? Because uh, you want to make it as easy as possible to start putting in and getting out data. And I think what you're going to see is um, if you run like an e-commerce site similar to like Amazon where you have, uh, you know, vendors who log in who don't necessarily need to see like half of the stuff that's in the admin and it's really not the like ideal experience for them because a vendor probably doesn't care about things like uh, your comments or whatever. I think you could use, uh, you'll start seeing a lot of sites using the REST API to build, you know, custom admin areas specifically for different types of users so that they get a tailored experience to exactly what they need to see. Uh, so for example, you, would, you might see like a REST API powered backend uh, for like a vendor that would show like their sales and their products and that's it, uh, just what they care about. I think that's one of the, gonna be one of the, the bigger use cases in at least the near future for the REST API. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what Andrew and Chris said are very important to look from the customer point of view. Um, it's easy in, in our space to take things a little bit too far. They went exactly to the right point of this is how you do it. When I talk about the WP admin interface, I'm talking about the framework. I'm talking about the feeling of understanding what it generally looks like. There will be people out there who will say this is an opportunity to come com create a completely new admin that c looks completely different and looks nothing like WordPress and looks more like insert name of other product here. Um, guys, that's why a lot of the clients are picking WordPress, because they understand that menu over here, the exact types of boxes, so forth and so on. Let's not forget about the customer. So th the API is very important. It's going to let us do an incredible amount of work, but the reason, the business reason behind using WordPress is it takes 15 minutes to train and you can go to WP101.com or any, any other place that's as good as, as Sean's site and get the basics in a few minutes and get going.
Yes, Your Honor. I'll start and I'll keep it short. Two answers. If it's below enterprise, I say go to a hosted uh, hosting solution or managed hosting solution that'll just take care of it for you, period. You're done. The enterprise clients have entire InfoSec teams that are taking care of this. It's no longer an issue. They know what they're doing. So right now it's just a bunch of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. That's it. Yeah, I explain like, you know, lock your car. I mean, it's a, I mean, like, you know, I'm like most of the security yeah. issues are yeah. simply, you know, and like it's people, it's outdated. They're using poor passwords. Um, they're not changing passwords. They're making everybody admins. I'm like, they're, they're not, they're not following the basics of, be, you know, like the low level best practices. So it's not even, you know, throwing, you know, heavy caching or, or, you know, various things at it from that level. It's just, they're not even following what you should do. Like the rules that you, you can't make a password and on other sites that doesn't follow certain rules. And WordPress has actually recently implemented some stuff that made that a lot better, but like, yeah, you just need to keep it up to date. Like they think they can install it and leave it alone, never touch it. Yeah, those ones get hacked and they're on $10, you know, they're on $5 hosts. And that's exactly what you get. Yeah. I had an opposite story. Of course, I don't have the swagger that this man has. But I was on a phone call uh, with a Fortune 50 financial company. And I was like, there's my big client, right? And I was with a, another marketing guy. And I'm like, we're, he's going to like, we're going to land this. They're going to invest in WordPress. I'm picking out what color Porsche I'm going to get after the deal's done. I get on the phone with the vice president of vice presidents of vice president. Picks up the phone, he goes, Matt, if I recommend WordPress to the board of directors, I'll lose my job. And I said, all right, well, <laughs> have a nice day, right? Because I'm not going to win in this scenario, right? These folks were still so dead set on picking another solution that was more secure in their eyes, recommended by another firm. Um, and I just, you know, lost that battle. Um, but it's, it's, you know, we still run into that as well. I wish I could have told him to lock his car. Probably would have told me to jump off a bridge. <laughs> Car salesman, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Most of the systems that I've worked with that are, you know, the connector part isn't really the difficult. It's like when you start getting into the, like, even Salesforce, but things like Salesforce, Microsoft CRM, some of the really large ones, they're implemented to the client spec. So there's no two instances that are going to be the same. Right. So it's like, I don't know where I'm going to map something because I don't know if that's going to be there. Um, yeah, like it's already, it's tailored to exactly what they want. So yeah, the ability to connect them is already, already exists. It's, I don't know where I'm going to put it because I don't know what is there for me to put. Um, and they're the only ones that have that sort of configuration, so they're going to have to pay for the customization because there's literally nobody else that can use it. We had a, uh, a massive company come to us and say, we want to move from Sitecore to WordPress, but we want all the marketing automation tools that Sitecore does. So we gave them a seven-figure budget and said, this is what it would take. And they said, yes. And we built it. And everybody on the entire team is so excited. We're going to make the coolest product out of this. We're going to be able to do X, Y, and Z. About day three of the discovery process, we realize this is so customized to reverse engineer what we do for them and turn it into a product that you're going to be able to say, go ahead and just install this. And you've got all the features of Sitecore. No. Not going to happen. Everybody uses those 
custom features so deeply, um, it's a one-off case. I mean, Salesforce is one of the favorite ones for me to figure out, because anytime I'm talking to a client, they're like, oh, we need to integrate with Salesforce. I'm like, which one? <laughs> and they'll be like, well, just Salesforce. I'm like, well, no. I'm like, it, you have, like, the ability for me to integrate is partially based on how much money you're already giving them, and then where I can put it is also based on how much money you're giving them, and what I can get out is also, I mean, like, everything with, you know, like, Salesforce is a la carte. So, like, you want this piece, you pay this, that, you know, there's very, there's very little that is this, you pay one fee and you get all this stuff from Salesforce. So, but it's popular enough that people just assume, oh, yeah, I can totally just connect it. It'll be fine. And you can, you can do the, the core part of the connection, but then where it goes and how it becomes useful data for them is always going to be based on what their existing workflow already is. It's amazing to gauge the reaction of folks who, like you said, like they get amazed that they can change SEO titles. And I was on a phone call the other day and we were setting up new pages and I used like Jake's like drag and drop, like reorder page plugin thing. And they're like, well, what about if we want to reorder the page? And I just dragged it up to the top. And they were like, oh my God, that is awesome, right? And then we like advanced custom fields for custom uh, fields and text on, the, on that page. And they're like, this is great. We don't have to call the engineering team to do these changes. And they just get, they get so overwhelmed and they're like, how do we add a carousel? And I said, oh, this is done. No carousels on the home page. We're not going to go that go far. To, should I use right? carousel.com? Yeah, 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 we're not going to do carousels. <laughs> right, but I, we can reorder pages and title tags and things like that. So yes, um, as as Chris talks about, Chris Lima talks about in his in his talks, you have to find the trusted advisor, and sometimes it's you know you are the expert for your particular field, but you want to refer to somebody else they're going to trust as well. So if you do have an IT department that you've already spoken to and says you know yes this isn't a problem, great. Otherwise, you know even if you're a small firm. Um, Talk to the folks at any of the WordPress managed hosting companies and say, hey, I've got a particularly difficult client. I need to explain to them security. Uh, would you jump on a call with me for somebody from your sales team to explain how we can do this better for client X because this is the scale of their business? Um, a lot of the managed WordPress hosting companies have sales teams for about, just about any size client. So and reach out. To, and they're happy to get on with you. Oh, yeah. That's their job. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have one other uh, question, selfish question. Uh, diversifying from the way we uh, publish with WordPress, open up your Chrome browser, log in, view the dashboard. What are your thoughts on the native app, like a Calypso project kind of thing? Like uh, any, anything you can speak to about that from experience, building native apps or anything like that? Um, I, and I mean, I mean that a native app, like how people log, administer their WordPress site or content. I mean, Calypso is pretty cool, and the idea being that, if they're, especially if they're coming from .com, you know, it, that was that was the whole idea of Jetpack to begin with. Was like they wanted people to be able to move over and not think anything changed. So if you're using something like Calypso, you're going to a .com site, you're going to your own .org site, nothing has changed. Um, Calypso wasn't built for us. Uh, a lot of things that are put out there are not for me. And that's cool. That's totally fine. Um, the you know the idea that there's like this native feel, you know I don't know what's native for a different company, and they're going to have to tell me. You know we're going to have to do discovery. We're going to have to figure out what their native process already is, um, and then yeah then we look at you know how much of that is is can be implemented, how much of that is even feasible, 
at times I'll be like, you know, this is the opportunity to fix flaws that you know exist in your workflow already, but you couldn't change because of whatever system you're using. Sometimes you kind of just give them that little bit to say, hey, you can totally blow up your problem now and change it if you want, and they're waiting for someone else to tell them that they can. Right. Right. They're waiting for permission right. to throw away like a bad process. And you give them that permission and they will gladly do it. Awesome. Chris, anything else you want to say? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, that's to me, I don't deal with a lot with the custom you know, apps, that type of deal. Um, but I, I could see where it would be useful. I would think it would be a bit more interesting if you get an enterprise sort of like the New York Times where WordPress isn't their only publishing flow. Uh, they use a different system depending on whether they're going to print media or whether they're going online only. Uh, so I, w I would think it would have to be a lot of discovery involved. Sure. Yeah. One, one minute? One minute. One question. Oh, one more question. Sitecore, Drupal, WordPress, where does WordPress lie in that? Depends on the client. Um, larger clients, you know, the enterprise level, yeah, you're looking at Sitecore, you're looking at Adobe CMS. Uh, SAP has something, I think, mm -hmm. that people yep. use. Uh, the Drupals of the world. Um, if you're dealing with government in DC, you're fighting Drupal, uh, and they probably already got the contract. contract. Um, the you know, as you kind of go down the line, like if it's e-commerce, you're looking at like big cartel, Shopify. Usually it's hosted solutions. You know, as soon as you get away from the enterprise level, you're, you're competing against a turnkey hosted solution. You know, you're, you're convincing someone to give you money to build them something that they need compared to taking something off the shelf that kind of sort of fits. We, we have a PR problem in the WordPress community. As a community, we are not willing to do what even Drupal is, let alone the the licensed solutions of actually engaging with uh, Forrester and the other technology research companies. Um, and the problem is then we're being discounted. We're being discounted still as today in the enterprise as a blog. We're being discounted as well. Maybe it's a CMS framework. Maybe it can do some light stuff. And until we engage the people who are writing the technical reports on content management systems in the enterprise, in the enterprise we still have a handicap. I agree. <laughs> and I think we'll wrap it up from there. So round of applause for our panel. And lunch is right there, through that wall. <laughs>